Hello and welcome to the Last Edit Podcast with myself, Citizen Sleeve, and my amazing friend, Silver Hawkins. Now, for those of you who don't know, this is a weekly film podcast where Silver and I alternate between choices of films and then we have a cracking old discussion about it. Now, it'd be that time of year when the ghosts and the goblins come out to play. And I love this time of year. So my suggestion for this week was an absolute horror classic. And that is William Friedkin's 1973, The Exorcist. Now, this is a film I bloody love. It's one of the films I... You know, there's that little category of films you could almost say, apart from a few things here and there, are considered kind of perfect. Your Ghostbusters, your Jaws, uh, your Robocop. I think that's almost in there. Now, there's two versions of this film, and we watched the one you've never seen before version, which is uh, a little different than the original direct, uh, yeah. original cinematic cut. Not not hugely, but a few bits here and there, but we'll, we'll get to those. Uh now, before we kick into your opinion of the film, we start discussing it properly, um, and before I do a bit of background, I just want you to tell the audience, because you have that historical knowledge, Pazuzu, who the hell is Pazuzu? Well, uh, Pazuzu is, like, no, I think I think that'll probably come up in our discussion of the movie, but Pazuzu is an ancient uh, Sumerian deity, or demon, um was worshipped and was actually a lot of kind of a protective demon uh, to ward off another demon who came and uh, preyed on on women and children and children like pregnant women and their children um now i didn't know that obviously before i i've seen the exorcist for years and years but i didn't realize that pazuzu the demon that is the central demon there are all the demons yeah. that we don't really know of in the exorcist but I didn't know he was supposed to be a protective demon. So Hollywood did a little bit of a flipperoo there with the old history Yeah, but I mean, it's, it, the, he does look rather, like, intimidating in his oh, yeah. in his statue. Although the statue is also kind of funny with the, like, hello. <laughs> yeah, the toast. weird hand yeah. up. And... <laughs> yeah. um, from, from ancient Sumeria. Um, well, I just thought it was an interesting historical yeah. fact. Yeah, yeah, really interesting. Okay, so The Exorcist. Written by William Peter Blatty, um, who uh, was quite a religious guy uh, and found this story he, he thought was quite enthralling. But he wanted to write something that was quite grounded in what was, uh, especially back then, quite a fantastical idea. Uh, William Friedkin has just, just come off the uh, French Connection and was really quite a, a documentarian-based filmmaker, capturing things in quite a gritty way. And I think that's why the marriage of the two worked quite well also for this a film. Also by the way. Oh, yeah, massive. That, that, that car chase scene. In, we'll cover French Connection at some point. My God. Uh, I mean, not just film. French Connection, but even in, in this one, The Exorcist as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. The practical effects in this are astounding at times. I mean, some of the stuff they do, the, the, we'll get to it. So, Reagan is a young girl who's living with her mum, played by Ellen Burstyn, who's an actress. They are on set, living in a house which is away from their usual home. And, well, we, before that, we see the main priest, or one of the main priests, played by Max von Sindau, start seeing signs um, in Iraq where they're doing this dig with artifacts that seem to suggest something is at work with this Pazuzu, with a demon of some kind. And we see the statue that you mentioned, and he finds a little uh, a little relic in the sand that he dusts off that has, has Pazuzu's face. And that, and oh, some of the, just that opening itself, the, some of the shots and some of the, the, the way the ambient noise works creates a really uncomfortable atmosphere, which starts the film off so well. And I think von Sindau, we, we said it before when we were watching it. Yeah, when we were uh, watching it, we said that um, it's the, one of the only times he is made to look older. Any any other film, he's already that old, <laughs> basically. Yeah. So it's really fun that, um, and that the, he's playing I mean, this. The old age makeup on him is really, really good. It is very, very good, yeah. Very, really good. So, th so that's the setup. Um, and, and then we get to Reagan, who is starting to... Ha well, she, she, first of all, she finds a Ouija board, and her mum talks to her about it, and she's, she's been playing with the, the Ouija board, and uh, talks to a guy called Captain Howdy, who is uh, ominously oppositional to what her, the Captain Howdy actually is. And it turns out that she starts displaying very odd symptoms. And at first, Ellen Burstyn thinks that her daughter is suffering from some psychosis, uh, some kind of illness, and we start to see more and more signs. Um, one of the most obvious signs is during a party early on. So Ellen Burstyn has got the cast round, the director round, and is having this big kind of soiree. And 
near the end when they're having their drinks and they're surrounded by a piano and one of the priests a priest is playing um, a tune on the piano Raiden comes downstairs and she just wets herself in front of everybody in silence and, and obviously Ellen Burstyn is completely distraught her, her daughter's you know um, displaying these really weird um, traits and slowly but surely is starting to exhibit behaviour that you wouldn't associate with a child like that then off we go Every kind of treatment you can imagine. We go through a series of hospital. Uh, again, this is shot quite grounded. It's almost like um, a 1970s or 80s medical drama in many ways. It's it's quite matter-of-factly shot. It's not. Um, there's no real camera sweeps or movements. It's shot as if you get, we're going through this procedure with Reagan. And some of it, I find, when when we were watching it, for instance, the noises the machine makes, the MRIs and the scanners, oh, they, they just go right through me. They're really industrial. And I know they're lessened now in, say, modern medical technology. But back then, that whole sequence where she'd been tested over and over again and they're injecting her. And, yeah, I find that one of the most uncomfortable parts of the entire film. Right. So then, there's nothing left to do. Doctors have tried everything. And where her behavior is getting to the point now where she's, she's expletive-ridden, swearing. She's starting to speak in tongues. Um... The one scene that I think really nails it for Ellen Burstyn to try something different because they've tried everything else is the crucifix masturbation scene um, where they walk in on, on Reagan. It's not and really she... masturbation. It's more well, of, of stabbing. rape. rape yeah. Um, I mean, Self-harm. She's not really pleasuring herself. Uh, well, no. So not really well, masturbation. <laughs> but it's, <laughs> it's one of those... It, it's difficult now... Like, a lot of people watch this film now, and because this film is so iconic and it's been so replicated and parodied and pastiched and everything else, that it, a lot of those things are quite lessened. But I think when you watch it properly, in the right vein, that scene is the scene that shocks the mother into going and talking to a priest and thinking this could be more than, you know, some medical condition or psychosis that they haven't been able to find or determine yet. And it's still shocking. It's not scary... I don't think, but I still find that scene really shocking because there's not in it. There's no other film that, that does anything like it, and True. it's really um, you don't see much. It's a bit like Reservoir Dogs, you know, with the ear being cut off and Mr. Blonde. But your imagination and and the, and the ferocity of what you're seeing on screen is why well, it can really um, take you off guard. Yeah. So after that, we end up with. Jason Miller, I think Jason Miller plays the, um, the, the younger priest, who's actually a psychologist. And to begin with, he's trying to warn her off. Don't, you know, don't, we don't need an exorcist. There's, there's going to be other solutions here. Exorcism is this ancient thing. No one even believes in it anymore. You know, what we're dealing with here is some form of psychosis, some kind of, of mental problem that we're going to have to deal with and fix. And it takes a long time for him to slowly but surely come around to the idea that Reagan is actually possessed and she does need an exorcism and a priest who knows what he's doing or what they're doing. But to get to that point, oh, we've got him going to see his old mother and that, that, that relationship with his brother that he has where his brother wanted him to be a psychologist so he had more money because they can't afford the treatment that his mother really needs. Um, then you've got the the first few meetings between him and Ellen Burstyn's character, and Ellen Burstyn is just... She plays her role so well in this film. You know, a mother distraught, doesn't know what to do, at the end of, of, of her tether, trying to find solutions. Yeah, and absolutely. wow, wow, does um, she just, she lets rip almost the, the first time she meets um, um, the priest, because she doesn't know what else to do. So... He sees Reagan, he sees the the face and the marks, he sees... The, there's that one bit a bit earlier on, actually, we just want to bring, bring your attention to, our attention to, with the practical effects again, where the whole room is being... Sp everything's spinning around the room, plates, objects, and it's all practical. And I think it's just shot so well. Yeah, considering I mean, you, you can contrast that scene with, like, the scene in Poltergeist, where they have... But it's basically special effects. Or it's... Yeah, it's all optical, map-based yeah. stuff, and it looks... It's like it's like the cartoon version almost when you when you watch it, but yeah. it's only three or four. No, it's eighty two something like that. Yeah. So, really interesting by comparison, and it looks so much better and so much more immersive. 
And I think the effects in this film are, are pretty good for the most part. Some stuff doesn't hold up, but that's the nature of those really old effects. So, yeah. So he starts trying to dig around and find out what's happening with Reagan. Is the possession real or not? And he starts recording her voice. There's that one bit where he takes it to a sound guy and they sit and listen to it. And it sounds like these multiple demons, these entities almost arguing with each other in, in different dialects and different tongues. And these are the things that start making him believe more and more. And then, uh, then we start getting into it, as it were. Yeah. So, what? What? We'll, we'll cover the end bit, the actual priest and stuff later on. But what are your overall thoughts of of this film? I mean, certainly not traditional horror in in many ways. I mean, it's really. Di I think it's really difficult to talk about The Exorcist because it's a movie that's so iconic and so ingrained in, not only like in popular culture, but it's been talked about to death. Really, I mean, there have been documentaries made, movies made, yep. uh, books written about it. Pretty much everyone has opined on it and analyzed it in depth and superficially. Um, so it's really, really difficult to, I think, to, to talk about and, and and bring anything new to the table with 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 the Exorcist, just because it's so it's so ingrained in, in cult, both in terms of its imagery and and just the cultural impact it had. Like like when when the Exorcist came out. Uh, exorcisms had basically, like they say in the movie, had basically died out, weren't really practiced anymore. Mm. And because, like solely because of this movie, they became in vogue again. As, and people started practicing it again. So it's um, it's a really difficult movie to talk about, I think. But, it, but I mean, you've, you've touched on a lot of, like the the opening of the movie is really, really solid in terms of just like the the shots we get, like the sound, the um, the Arabic prayers, um, mm. the Muslim prayers we get over, uh, like the dig sites in um, in Iraq, in Iraq, uh, where they're digging out Sumerian ruins, um, really, really help sort of set the mood for this like exotic uh, locale, um, kind of a little bit like Indiana Jones to an extent, but but more menacing and more more intimidating than that. Um, and yeah, there's, there's uh, like, I mean, um, like you touched on, it has this really grounded feel to it that feels really believable and, and credible. And really, I don't, f I don't view it so much as a horror movie. It's not scary. What, what unnerves me about the movie is, um, is, uh, the mother. Um, and I, sorry, I forget, um, Alan Burstyn. Yeah, Alan Burstyn, but, but I forget, uh, the mother's name. In, in oh, the movie. Pff, God. Um, yeah, <laughs> but but no, it doesn't matter. Um, but but like her suffering as she sees her daughter basically go through all of this, like what appears to be like a major mental breakdown and descent into complete madness, and being completely unable to help her, which is a complete nightmare because one of the worst things in life is to see someone you care about suffer and being unable to help. But, to help them or do anything to, to alleviate their suffering. Yeah. And that, that angle really, really, really works in this movie. Um, I think that is the most solid part to, to be honest, like the exorcism at bit at the end kind of falls a bit flat for me. doesn't really work. Um, part of that is undoubtedly just because it's been so ingrained in, in like imagery with the, like the twisting head, the projectile vomit, uh, all of that stuff, um, hmm. that it just, it does nothing for me. Um, but, but what, what really hits me is that, is that dynamic of the mother and daughter and the daughter suffering and the mother being completely unable to help her and being at her, at her wits end when she meets with, with the priest and begging him because the priest says, oh, you have to go see a therapist. But now I've seen every single therapist. You can't tell me to go see a therapist. I've tried that. You have to give me some other option some other uh avenue to to pursue um and and just the desperation like you said like the desperate desperation that ellen burston plays in that moment just burns through the screen and is really really effective yeah i think she, she's the um she's the character we look through in terms of this she's film. the anchor so, yeah she is she's the what she's we're going through that with her we're, we're going through her her pain watching her daughter, as you said, slip into what seems like madness. I'd agree as well. 
this film isn't. I, I'm sure some people would still find it scary. It's not. It's again. It's not a horror for me as you now. It's more like a a psychological thriller almost. Yeah, uh, kind of. Uh, and very much. It, it's not the horror. It's the atmosphere. Yeah. The atmosphere in places in this film, even towards the end, when the house, you know, when when they've even just started the uh, the ritual, and the house is drained of heat, and everywhere is ice cold, and the breath is heavy, and just yeah. that the atmosphere really draws you into it. Absolutely. I think, and and you know, some of the acting, I think that you know, the, the, most of the cast is really really good, and the the I little interactions. Good. I, I yeah, can't, well, I can't remember any that stood out as weak or, or not effective. Uh, uh, not weak, just annoying. The, the, who's that di director's called Kirk something at the start? He's the one who's trying to... Uh, uh, the drunk get... Yeah, who's the drunk yeah. guy. Oh, his voice goes through me a little bit. And he's, of course, one of the first um, victims of Reagan. Yeah, and, we don't, and notably we don't see it. killed off screen. Uh, uh, yeah, so, exactly. So it's, left exactly. To up, it's left up to our imagination to, to imagine what happened in the bedroom with Reagan that left him with his head twisted around the back and thrown out the window and and down probably the scariest stairs in in movie history um, <laughs> yep I, w I was half surprised that they weren't the stairs used in the recent film the joker i just right. thought would have thought they'd gone back to it and done that but they were pretty good as well but yeah i i totally agree i think this is a film that it stands the test of time in many ways but it's oh, so problem but it's so problematic now because it's been copied so much in so many other and forms parodied, of media mm, yeah the parodies in particular i mean uh uh repossessed leslie nielsen uh, yeah. that's got linda blair in it anyway the scary movie i mean we can go on and on and on there's a richard Pryor one i think in a comedy sketch there's more modern ones i mean james woods in, in <laughs> scary movie too i think it is Good. yeah but it does lessen it over time and you're right you know back then the way that reagan's face it becomes more and more slashed, and yep. she starts projectile vomiting. You know, it, it, what was split peas? Let's you know, not yeah, be mad. But she was just or... split peas from a um, from a tube. <laughs> but at the time, it looked quite visceral, and it was really intense. Whereas now, I can imagine, especially if you're watching it with other people, very easy to laugh at. It yeah. just is because you've laughed at it in so many other ways before. So the it, initial, I mean, you're going to have that impact. It, it's always been my issue with like 70s movies because the way they um, they handle liquids, like blood as well, it's this really thick, viscous thing yeah. that there just doesn't, because blood is not thick and viscous. Uh, blood is rather thin. Um, well, Dawn of the Dead is very much like that, the 78 original by Romero. Yeah, yeah it's, and it's basically really like liquid mucky. ketchup or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's very sticky. <laughs> yeah. And it just doesn't look like blood or vomit, um, mm. it, which is what really sort of helps keeps that moment from from really landing for me. Um, like you mentioned, uh, the hospital scenes unnerving you a lot with with the audio and stuff. But but like, I mean, that that's the perspective for me. For me, they did nothing because for me that was basically my childhood. <laughs> so, of course, yeah. So you're extent, used right? to that machinery. So, and yeah. That. So for me, that that, that just did nothing. Um, like that, that that was just the uh, oh I know that I've I've been there. Um, <laughs> for me and... it's like a an overbearing of the senses that sequence yeah because it gets quicker and, and I mean, quicker I mean there are sound is so there intense. are people who like when they go into an MRI or or the like they they panic because it can be extremely intimidating uh, I mean especially mm. if you're claustrophobic as well claustrophobic you go as well, into yeah. like this really tight uh, uh, scanner to, to, to just scan your body it. It feels really constrictive, and um, and people can really start to panic and hyperventilate and yeah. and, and freak out. Uh, so I I totally understand that. It's just that like for me that that hasn't that's not unnerving at all. That's just a fact of life. Part of life. <laughs> I'm sure again if I'd had the same experience of hospitals, um, that would be pretty normal for a lot of people who go into you do to do yeah. procedures and and frequent treatments and stuff. Yeah, well, let's talk a little bit about the differences. I mean, uh, you know, th there's two versions of this film. There's the original um, William Friedkin directed cinematic version. And then there's the version you've never seen, which is basically just um, William Peter Blatty coming back into contact with Friedkin and having a chat with him. And they worked out that he wanted some stuff from the books back in the film. That was it, really. It's not really a director's cut as, as such. It's more a writer's cut in many ways because he's the one who made the suggestions. 
Yeah. Now, some stuff works and some stuff doesn't. The spider walk is probably the most iconic addition. And it doesn't really work, but it's, it's become another one of those iconic things. Yeah, but it's, it's yeah. completely unnecessary. Yeah, and its inclusion has become an iconic thing because it's quite actually jarring in yeah. makeup terms and everything compared to the rest. There's a conversation um, between the two priests during the exorcism and that one on the stairs. Works on the stairs, yeah. And that does work. It just it, it gives between, a bit uh, more brevity Karis to that and, scene. Um, and what is Father Karis and Father um, uh, something with an M, uh, the one Fonsudo plays. Um, Oh, oh, it's like Marius or something, isn't it? Oh, that's totally wrong. Yeah, I for, no, I forget, forget his name, but but Father Merrick? No, 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 Merrick. Um, it's something no, like I that. I don't remember, but but I should, this is the, the only time two, I got my between phone. Between the two priests, um, <laughs> and about how the demon is trying to make them despair and lose hope. Yeah. Um, and then that one works. I mean, it's not entirely like it, the the movie works without that scene, but that scene does contribute and add something. Absolutely. What I think doesn't contribute a particular uh, lot is the the additions of Pazuzu. And oh the... yeah, no, 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 no. Like the yeah, the like the superimposed shots and and yeah, yeah, yeah. like they're just they 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 no, they're, no, they're no, seemingly no. sporadic. There's the one where Burston's in the kitchen and Pazuzu's face appears on the top of the oven or something. Yeah. It's like what? That's weird. <laughs> and then the the optical effects are, and, are and occasionally, a little bit occasionally more you just get like a flash shot of. Pazuzu or or of um, uh, Reagan. Uh, yeah, yeah. And that so it, that it doesn't work. It doesn't. It's it's. I think it's an addition for addition's sake, and it doesn't give anything to the movie. If anything, it kind of forces Pazuzu yeah, on you a bit too much. Yeah. yeah. So I think they could be reduced. I do think the the very last shot, um, where Carrick has obviously or Carrick sorry now has, has kind of ingested the demon or the demons passed over from yeah. Reagan. Um, originally, it was just a kind of change of, of subtle makeup and the face. Whereas with the um, version you've never seen before, I hate calling it that. What a stupid name for a bl oh. yeah. <sighs> just call it the addition. I don't care anything but that crap. But his face changes, and I think they've added a little bit to it to make it more fluent. Yeah. Um, in terms of that that bit, and then obviously he goes out the window, rolls down the stairs, his neck breaks, um, and the other older priest is already dead by now, played by Sid out and Reagan. Well, Ellen Burstyn, Burstyn. Ellen Burstyn, Burstyn. I love that alliteration. That came from yeah. nowhere. And conveniently, <laughs> the detective Conveniently, as well. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm a fool. Uh, and sees Reagan, and Reagan's come out of it. And she doesn't know what's happened. Yeah. And, yeah, I know what you mean. It's a really difficult film to talk about. It's got wonderful everything. Yeah. But it's so emblazoned in popular culture... How do you dig any deeper than what's already been dug into, I guess, if you yeah. don't know about Jesuit priests and actual I mean, exorcisms? You, you, and... you touched on like the conflict kind of between William Peter Blatty, who wrote the script, and um, and the director, uh, William Friedkin, where, um, I mean, Friedkin was, wasn't really interested at all in the religious aspect, whereas William Peter Blatty was. Um, and... And I think that kind of shows in the movie <laughs> a little bit, uh, just in the documentarian style of, of Friedkin. Um, well, they're both trying to be grounded, but they're doing it in very different ways, aren't they? That, you know, Blatty, yeah. Blatty is creating... He, he does not, doesn't want to make a monster movie or some traditional horror movie with obvious overt scares and all this stuff. He wants what a real kind of case study-ish of, of what, it's in, uh, what an exorcism is in the grounded sense. How you have to categorize a person, how they then get attached to certain priests, the process you go through with the Catholic Church, all these different things. Yeah. Whereas, as you said, Freakin don't care about any of that. <laughs> he just he just wants to shoot what could be this fantastical tale in such a grounded, almost documentarian fashion that it seems more real and it immerses you in in this in this flight of and fancy I, I, that I, haven't been around for a long time. I mean, I called him a lunatic early on in in this podcast uh, for a reason because Freakin is the type of guy who will do anything to get his shot. He doesn't really care about his actors so you touched on like the, the car scene in um, in French Connection but where he en endangered people's lives knowingly just to get his yep. shot. Um, but like here like the ping the things he puts Ellen Burstyn through yeah uh, like in terms of special effects where where she where there's a there's the scene where um Reagan basically attacks Ellen Burstyn um, mm. and assaults her. 
uh, or the demon does, possess, possessing Reagan. And she gets knocked back. And there's this harness that yanks her back. And she hurt herself and said, no, please don't yank me that hard. And uh, Friedkin's response was, no, yank her harder. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the Reagan bed thing, where yeah. she's obviously, it's quite early on, and she's been thrown forward and backwards. People were like, could you could you do that less, please? So he was like, no, let's get ah! really hard. And yeah, he wasn't, like the set, from what I understand, was not the most pleasant of places. There were a number of accidents. And yeah. as you said, Freakin have no regard at all for anyone on the set other than getting exactly the thing he wanted in that yeah. shot. I mean, yeah, French Connection as well, as you said, and, and, and other films besides. He is He was a bit of a maverick madman who uh, I mean, sought health and safety. A bit like the guy... Uh... I forget what was the director who did Twilight Zone, uh, where there was the enormous accident that killed people, um, but the helicopter crashed on top of the actor, uh, an actor carrying child actors. Um, oh right, no, one of the um, Twilight uh, Zone series, like TV episodes. No, I think it was the television, or the original the television film. movie. Even I don't think it was the show. I think it was uh, the film. Yeah. Oh God, I haven't watched that in years and years. That's one we should have chosen. <laughs> that's that's relatively obscure now. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I, it's a difficult one to talk about, as we've said. I think we've talked about everything we pretty much can. It, I, I doubt many people out there haven't at least come across it in some sense. I just don't think a lot of people now, modern audiences, have perhaps actually just sat down and watched the original film. And no. if think... you can separate yourself from all the modern stuff, it's a good watch. I think, I mean, with The Exorcist, I think it's like a lot of classical literature in that it grains itself in, in popular culture in a lot of ways in, in terms of its influences, but hmm. not not everyone will, especially modern audiences, will have read it. Like, increasingly few people have read um, As I Lay Dying by William Faulkner or For hmm. Whom the Bell Tolls by Ernest Hemingway. Heart of or, Darkness, yeah, exactly. Or whatever. Exactly. Um, so, so, I mean, I think it, it is worth visiting and... and um, and reading, uh, just like it is any classical work. Like I finally got around to reading um, Tolstoy's uh, Anna Karenina um, because I've been intimidated, like most people, uh, <laughs> by Tolstoy. Uh, and uh, Anna Karenina is undoubtedly one of the greatest novels ever ever written. And I can only recommend that people uh, go to it and don't be intimidated by Tolstoy. Mm. Um, but but yeah. Uh, Exorcist is definitely worth a watch and if you haven't seen it it is iconic for a reason it is considered one of the best horror films of all time for a reason um, like it's the shot the cinematography is remarkable the acting is really good uh, the writing is for the most part fairly solid um, people some people call it boring which is probably, they do. probably and the greatest I don't know well it's a bit of a the most popular of criticism mind, of it but yeah but, I don't think it's boring at all. At all, um, I think the pacing works, especially because the pacing is carried by the atmosphere that you that you described yeah. the building of the atmosphere from the opening scenes in Iraq up through uh, the scenes with um, with uh, Reagan and her mother to Reagan's um, worsening condition and and uh, her mother's like despair at being unable to do anything to help her, and then the exorcism at the end. Um, like the second act of the film is by far strongest, I think, when when Reagan uh, sort of descends into madness. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I actually like that. Um, if you you know just before the you know twenty minutes, thirty minutes before the end, that almost middle portion of the movie, yeah. I think, is the strongest, as you said, because it's about discovery. It's about who is this demon? How can we help Reagan? You know, Ellen Burstyn trying to find new avenues to to support their daughter, and that, they're the strongest elements of the film. I think if you're going to go and watch this now, and you're a modern, younger individual, you know, I'm 40, Silver's almost 40, so we, we've watched this film a long, long yeah. time ago, and watched it since. But if you're coming at it with a fresh face, fresh head, try and not go into it thinking this is like any modern horror film, because it really is not. This is not tropey. This is, well, things that come after it are tropey because of it, but it is not tropey. It is not jump scary. It is not there to keep you on the edge of your seat like a modern film, like It Would, for instance. No. It's it's got an established pace that steadily builds. And I think this is a bug boy you and I both have. A lot of people will find certain... And that's fine, it's subjective, obviously. But a lot of people find certain films very difficult to get into just because they aren't 
Michael Bay, Michael explosion, you know, yeah. constant jump scares everywhere. That's because Much that, like Blade that's, how, that's how we've been conditioned now, because that's how most yeah. movies are made now for that type of editing. Well, the summer blockbuster, of, yeah. obviously, now is yeah. basically that. So go into it with a, a clear head. Try and disregard all the stuff you've seen and the stuff you know about it. And just... Yeah, especially the uh, you'll be scared out of your... Uh, oh, God, that tagline. Yeah, no, you won't. You, I, I find it a very interesting and well-directed and constructed character study. Absolutely. That, 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 that's what it is for me. The psychological elements are far stronger than anything else. So that's what you should go into it for. So that was uh, one of the finest horror thrillers ever made. Um, and I suspect we're going to carry this theme on, but perhaps we won't. Maybe you've changed your mind. We shall see. <laughs> right then. What are we going to be watching next week, Silver? No, it's another um, fairly iconic horror movie. Um, I mean, I, my my reticence to choose it is, again, because similar to The Exorcist, I don't know that we could talk about a whole lot um, that hasn't been talked about with this movie. Um, but it is a movie where we have sort of deferring opinions, so there is that... We do sort indeed, of, um, yeah. ...sort of that interest, because I consider this to be one of the best horror films I've ever seen. Uh, it's one of the only horror films that ever unnerved me watching it, though I did watch it at like 1 or 2 a.m. back then, uh, like in late early 99, I think it was. Um, uh, but it is The Blair Witch Project, a movie that spawned an entire genre, has also been lampooned a number of times. Um, <laughs> but it's a movie that really depends on its audience for the scares. It doesn't provide the scares on its own so much as it leaves it over to the imagination of the viewer. And I think it is all the more effective for that method. Well, although we have diverging opinions on this particular film, I'd be interested to watch it again because I haven't seen it probably for at least seven or eight years, something like that. Right. And I've obviously seen the sequel, Book of Shadows, and then the, the recent yeah, smart the kind of... Um, not worth your time. No, and then the recent pseudo sequel, which is mm, we'll maybe get to that at some point. But yeah, interesting, and uh, we hope you are enjoying our little dip into uh, Halloween horror for at least a couple of uh, these lovely podcasts. Yeah. Right. Thank you very much for watching. You can find us on YouTube. You can find us on Spotify. You can find us on Anchor and iTunes and all these lovely places. And because it's Halloween, talk to us in the comments about horror films. What are some of your favourites? What are some of the most obscure you've seen? What are some of the most popular you've seen? And uh, what really gets your fancy going on these Halloween evenings? We have been The Last Edit Podcast. I have been Citizen Sleeve. And I've been Silver Hawkins. Have a very wonderful, scary Halloween. Trick or treat. And take care. <laughs>